Meet the sheriffs. Let's go and introduce ourselves. Got an iCart route to attend here today. If it's not paid, we're going to be removing the stuff. Their job is to get you your money back. It's about to get physical. It's the rest of all offence to stop me and do my job. If you've been ripped off and don't know where to turn... We need to deal with it now. We're going to remove vehicles to that value. If you're acting on his authority, pay it. If you've been to court but still not been paid what you're owed... Are you going to open this building, sir, or am I going to force entry into it? You need to pay this. It's time to call the sheriff. Put your hands on me. I'm going to call the locksmith. Effect entry into the premises and remove all the items. Whoa, 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 whoa. They're enforcement agents of the High Court, and the law says they're on your side. It's collected 42 grand. Coming up... Hello there, sir. ...at a store in Coventry, the sheriffs are attempting to clear a big debt. It'd be everything out the shop. When Sheriff Tom is confronted... Sorry, you're not going to allow you ...and prevented from removing goods... It's about to get physical, basically. They're, they're stopping me doing my job. ...the law steps in. Will the sheriffs be able to do their job? Come out for me. Sheriffs Lawrence and Kev are called to a well-known London pub. It's been occupied by squatters, barricaded and booby-trapped. Well, I need a crowbar again. Can the sheriffs get in and get the squatters out? You've got in front, you two go to the top floor. And when Michael Scheuer worked on a van at the family's garage, they ended up frustrated and out of pocket. Very annoying, because we're in a small garage, so we, we every penny counts. Can the sheriffs get them the money they're owed? Do you know what, there's something so iffy with this. <laughs> It's a misty morning as Sheriffs Craig Wilde and Tom Coyle pilot their van through the early morning commuters. We're on our way to Coventry today. Uh, it's nice and bright as you can see. Attention to detail is part of the Sheriff's mantra and that starts with preparation for the day ahead. I've had my muesli and I'm into, at the minute, I'm into mocha. I don't intend to do breakfast to be fair because we start generally that early in the morning. Today's case involves a substantial debt they're hoping to recover from a local convenience store. The debt's £21,836.81. Fingers crossed it's a shop. We can walk straight in. The early opening of the store is convenient for the local community and sheriffs alike. Hello there, sir. Is whoever's in charge available? He's not here. He's not. Could you get him on the phone for me? We're here with a whole court writ today to execute. The man behind the counter says he's just a friend helping out the shop owner. While he tries to get the boss on the phone, the sheriffs start to list the extensive stock for potential removal if the debt isn't paid. There's a lot of stuff here. Tom checks and discovers that the man being phoned by his friend is not the debtor named on the writ. And it's that name then. Obviously, that's your friend, yeah. My friend is Frame. Oh, that's not it's your friend. His brother, and it's not my friend. Your friend is the brother of him. Yeah, that's brother, yeah. He's the brother of that's him. Brother, yeah. Right. I still don't know. <laughs> if the man running the business isn't the one named on the writ, it could be a problem. But Craig has spotted the liquor licenses on display. He's the holder of the license, but he's got license for sure. There seem to be two licensees, the debtor on the writ and someone with the same surname. Two brothers. Do you want to try him again, sir? Because we're, get, we're getting to a point where we, we might have to start carrying on. The man's back on the phone and the news isn't good. He says the man on the writ now has nothing to do with the business because it has changed hands. But the sheriffs have seen evidence to the contrary. We've already seen his name on one of the... Uh, he's the license, not the licence holder here, but the... He's like the nominated uh, advisor here. So he's already interlinked here with the business, so we need someone to come down here and we need to see a lot of documentation to prove otherwise. OK, I'll see you shortly. Uh, da, da. Yeah, he's, he's coming down. That's all right. As they wait for the business owner, Tom searches through the paperwork lying about, but can't find what he's looking for. It's got the store number, but not the debtor's name. That's fine, cheers, mate. Get the store number, and then we'll phone Nisra up to see who's the store owner. Two people have arrived. 
The woman says the business used to be run by her brother-in-law, the man on the writ, but now she and her husband run it. The other man is here to support her. They say the debtor now has nothing to do with the business. At the moment, we think he may have something to do with the business still here, because we have noticed his name is up on one of the documents up there. The woman who says she runs the business has brought some paperwork to prove it. What's this you got here? The documents show the lease and business rates are indeed paid by the woman, but the owners still haven't shown Tom evidence of who owns the stock in the shop. I don't suggest you, without seeing conclusive proof, they're going to want us to remove them. And because it's such a large debt, without nothing being paid today, it'd be everything out the shop. Shifting everything is going to be a massive task. 18 tonner. They're, they're going to look at removing. While Craig gets onto the office to talk trucks, Tom tries to convince the people who say they own the shop that it would be better to pay. I say the only way to relieve the situation at the moment is getting some payment made. Then Craig finds a crucial piece of paperwork. And the stock's in the defendant's name. So the invoice is paid. When's that? Last week. Let's have a look. Well, that changes things considerably, doesn't it? There's invoices to the soil my colleagues just found, 4th of December, yeah. which have been paid by our defendant here. That's the name we use in case and for the show. So yeah. you're still using yeah. the defendant's name here. All them goods are going to be removed unless money's paid. There's no more discussing it now. It needs to be paid. We've got proof that the goods here belong to our defendant. The owners say they were just using an account in the debtor's name, but paid for it themselves. But an invoice in the name that's on the sheriff's writ covering a substantial chunk of the shop's stock is enough for Tom. Yeah, it's about his bank to rights, to be honest, mate. So we're digging more and more paperwork out now with our man's name all over it. Speak in a bit. Hello. Right, that, that was my manager on the phone. He wants us to start stacking everything up, getting it ready to be removed. The owners have called in their solicitor, Mr. Khan, to help. So Tom explains the situation to him. Obviously, they said he's nothing to do with this company whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, we found evidence on the contrary, which is invoices for all the stock in the gentleman's name, okay. listing everything throughout the shop. Uh, I've obviously given the offer of making payment today for this high court order. Mm -hmm. If it's not paid, we're going to be removing the stock. So let me just speak to my clients. Get all the by all means, by all means, sir. Yeah, OK. With a lot of stock to get into the truck, Tom starts stacking the alcohol for removal. Was there any boxes out the back, Craig? Uh, Sorry? We're not going to allow you to take this to get it. No, it's been removed. No, you can't. We're not going to allow it. We can. No, you well, it's can't. not whether you would like us. We're here to remove it. No, we can't allow it. So we're going to need the police back, yeah, so you're stopping no us. Problem, yeah. three, three, nine, Craig, do you want to ring the police? Because this gentleman's stopping me doing my job. I thought you were just a friend anyway of the... Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, friend, but Just a friend, me, but you yeah. seem a bit more involved yeah, to be this upset. He's going to end up getting arrested because he's going to stop me doing what I'm trying well, to do. If you want, him, well, if you want well, your well, client... Well, well, if you want to call the police, then you can call the police. I'm going to need to because if, otherwise well, if, I'm going to have to push well, past him. Well, if you want to, do, you want, do you want to call the police yourself then? No problem. This enforcement has taken an unexpected turn. Hello there. I need police assistance at a shop. I'm executing a high court writ. It's about to get physical, basically. They're, they're stopping me doing my job. With Tom physically prevented from removing the stock and the police on their way, when we return to Coventry, we'll see if the forces of law and order will allow the sheriffs to do their job. You going to mug me? I might get a mug you. It's that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run a decent marathon. Thank you very much. Download Veely now. Taking the early morning shift are enforcement agents Mark Newton and Kev McNally. They're in central London going south. As they head under the Thames, Kev gets to grips with today's case. We are going to Southern Engine Services Limited and we're looking for £2,000 and a pound. The business Mark and Kev are helping is Wickham Cars, run by David Scheuer and his son Michael. I help out my dad's garage. 
business has been here for approximately 12 years. Uh, my father's been in the motor trade industry for about 38, 40 years now. We're only a little garage. We're not backed up by a big chain or big investors. It is literally just us, these four walls, and so our customers are our top priority. Wickham Cars sometimes worked with other garages when specialist work had to be done. If an engine needed reconditioning, they often used Southern Engine Services. We've had a very long relationship with them. Um, never had a problem in the past. Problems started when Southern Engine Services asked Wickham Cars to do some work on a van belonging to one of their customers. We were contacted by Southern Engine Services, asked to remove a, a engine from an Iveco daily. Um, which we said, yeah, not a problem. Uh, vehicle was dropped off to us and we, we noticed it was the wrong engine in the vehicle. The van that arrived was fitted with a bigger engine than they were expecting. It was a bigger job and this would lead to extra time and cost. They said, yeah, not a problem, carry on with it. Um, so we proceeded to take the engine out. The engine went back to Southern Engine Services to be worked on, but they had problems with it too finding it hard to get the correct pistons and valves. Two months after they'd taken it out, Wickham finally got the engine back. But instead of finding the engine ready to install as expected, they had to spend time reassembling it at further cost. And that wasn't all. Once in the van, the Southern Engine Services engine didn't run properly. We were getting quite annoyed by this stage with Southern Engines. We had this vehicle sat around, taking up our room, we didn't seem to be getting very far with phone conversations with them. Eventually, Southern Engine Services agreed to take the van away. We agreed a price before they left, covering our labour costs, the work we put into it, um, which they then jumped in the vehicle, took it back up to London to carry out the repair. The job had been harder, more costly, and taken far longer than Wickham Cars had expected. Now they had another challenge, getting their money. We were told, oh, it'll be settled um, in a fortnight. So we, we allowed it to go a fortnight. We did notice a payment of £500 go into our account, which was only half of what we had agreed. And it was very annoying because we're in a small garage, so we, we, every penny counts, as they say. After chasing Southern Engine Services for the money and no longer receiving replies, Wickham Cars took them to court. The judgment was in Wickham's favour. Although Southern Engine Services didn't attend the hearing, they challenged the judgment in writing. Michael and his dad had to go back to court. Finally, the judge refused to set aside the judgment. Wickham Cars had won. It was a relief when we did win judgment. However, we were thinking that it was going to be a trouble to get the money out of the, end, the Southern Engine Services. For literally the fact that they fought all this way, we could see they were going to carry on fighting. Unfortunately, Michael's prediction came true. They haven't received the money from Southern Engine Services the court says is theirs. But there is one final chance to get what they're owed. After seeing the sheriffs on TV and how they enforce court orders for reclaiming people's money, we believe that they would be the best course of action for us for getting our money back from Southern Engines. <laughs> Aiming to recover the money are Mark Newton and Kev McNally. It looks like Southern Engine Services have, had, have tried to get this judgment set aside um, and it's been refused. The sheriffs soon locate the Southern Engine Services premises and it looks like the mechanics are out to enjoy the sunshine. Southern Engine That's Services, me, yeah. got a high court writ against Southern Engine Services. Yeah. From David Shower. Shower. Yeah, do you know what? There's something so iffy with this. Is there? It's unbelievable. I mean, we haven't got any details of it. Well, we've got... We've got a detail that says, did you apply to have it set aside? Yep. And that's been dismissed. And then I had, I had a... The business owners are very familiar with the case, but tell Mark and Kev they aren't happy with the way the court dealt with them. He went through all the paperwork, he went through all the emails, right? Nothing had come back to us. No litigation, no paperwork, no emails, nothing. So all that goes on down there and all the decisions that are made in that courthouse... It's Portsmouth, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. none of it, and I mean none of it, comes back here to us. You know, how can you have a court case uh -huh. that you want yeah. to defend and you don't get a date? 
The owners of the business complain that after an initial conversation with a lady from the court, they never received any paperwork telling them about the date of the hearing, meaning they missed it and lost the case. For the sheriffs, it's of little consequence. They're here to enforce a high court writ, and that's what they plan to do. It's unbelievable. Uh, it's a proper carry-on. Um, but any money we take is held for 14 days by us. It doesn't get dispersed. It can't get dispersed. We have to legally have to hold it. Right. So anything you want to do in that time, you can take measures in that yeah. time. The man believes he shouldn't have to pay and wants time to speak with the court. So he asks the sheriffs to revisit tomorrow. But for the sheriffs, there is no tomorrow. So, we can't leave, though. We, we can't leave. Well, let me tell you your problem. I own the building in a different company, and I own all the machines. So oh, you, yeah. ain't gonna, you ain't going to go away with much, are you? Right, that's fine. That's fine. That's, so, you have you just got there. something to show us that? I, I can show you Yeah. I can show you where I've taken the monthly rent out of the bank to the building and the machines. Yeah. That'd be great. It's not good news. The business owner shows Mark receipts, stating that he personally owns the valuable tools and machinery. This means Southern Engine Services owns nothing of value. The sheriffs have nothing to list and no obvious way to get Mr. Scheuer his money. It's all it. Yeah. Yeah, there's all the goods that and buy. Yeah. Mm, so. We're going to leave him paperwork. He's got paperwork. Yeah, all good. Mate. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cheers, mate. Bye bye. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. It looks like Mark and Kev are going to have to leave empty handed. But Mark is not completely disheartened. He said if he, if he goes to court on found against him, he'll pay. It turns out there is a tomorrow after all, because two weeks later, Southern Engine Services paid in full. Well, we had some news from the sheriff. They've been successful in collecting our claim and our costs. And I'm happy to report that we are now better off financially and able to buy some new equipment for our workshop. I'd like to say, Sheriff, thank you for getting my money. Job well done. Southern Engine Services told us they had wanted to contest the case, but the court date was twice arranged for a time when they were unable to attend, as the director was away. They said they were currently in communication with the court about the issue and were looking for recompense or for a new hearing, as they disagreed with the series of events as told to the court and the way they were treated. They said they wished to make no further comment until the dispute with the courts was settled. In Coventry, the sheriffs are trying to settle a debt of over £21,000, owed by a convenience store. But Tom has been physically prevented from removing the stock, and the police have been called. There's about £2,000 worth of this stock in invoices in the name of our defendant. So that's what we're here to remove today, okay. if they don't want to make payments. Uh, obviously, there's been a bit of an issue with me getting stopped doing that. Hence, we uh, called you just to uh, okay. obviously stop a breach of the peace. But the owner's solicitor has been looking at the sheriff's writ and he spotted a problem. Right, my friend. There's no seal on this. We've got a sealed copy what, in the what, office. What, 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 which can is we have blue. that? I mean, it, it I'll speak to the office for you now. This writ was issued by the Croydon District Registry Queen's Bench on where's the date? Is there a date on this? It's a defective notice. It's not a defective notice. Oh, it is a defective notice. It, sh it should be sealed copy, date, time, etc. and when it was issued. There's no date. Tom asks the office to send over a copy of the original sealed dated writ. Meanwhile, the shop has found evidence some goods were paid for by the new owners. It means not everything can be removed, and Tom is stacking the stock the sheriffs can take away. Plenty of weeks there. Uh, it's going to be all the cereals, more or less, are on this list. So it'd be, it'd be more or less, well, it's all this oil. I think more or less the next, what I can see. Most of the bars down here. It's quite a lot of stock, actually, when you work out. Another copy of the High Court writ has been emailed over, but it's still not right. No, it must have a seal. There's no seal, is there? That's what's just been sent to me. There's the High Court claim number. But it should be sealed, shouldn't it? It will be sealed, sir. I mean, how do I know you type it yourself? You're trying to tell me I've, I've gone to the effort of I'm... making that up myself. No, well, well, you tell can me. You, can you honestly where, say that? Where is the seal? Where is the sealed order? Our office have, will have the sealed copy. So, so what, what kind of scanning are it to us? Yeah, I'll ring him up again. Ten minutes later, the sealed writ appears. Yeah, uh, that's fine. He's happy with that. One you second, I'll just put it on the phone to him. One second. There you go. It's Mr. Lawrence. And the enforcement is back on. 
Tom needs to remove more high-value goods to have any chance of clearing the debt. Next on his list are the cigarettes, but the man supporting the new shop owner has other ideas. Excuse me, don't yeah. start obstructing me. Yeah, tobacco. Come on. You can have Sorry, whatever the no cigarettes are going. To Never worry about it. Anyway, Tom. Yeah. Come in, my friend. Yeah. The police have seen enough. This is not how the sheriffs wanted it to go, but being an enforcement agent of the High Court gives them powers and protection under the law, and that's why the man has been arrested. It'll be taken to the police station, it'll be investigated. And it won't be me making a decision on what the outcome will be. It'll be the custody side or the Crown Prosecution Service. Back in the shop, the turn of events has visibly upset the woman who runs the business. She starts phoning round to try to raise some money. Knowing they are unlikely to get a full payment today, the sheriffs are prepared to take a part payment and list goods on paper with a view to later removal until a payment plan is put in place. It needs to be about three and a half thousand minimum. The shop solicitor has taken over negotiations with the person on the phone. It has to be three and a half. My office is just saying. Can you wait for an hour? We can't, sir. We've been here nearly four hours. Yeah, it'll take some time to get here. We can't can you do that, make sir. it a bit shorter? Can you do, say, half an hour? Because time's right? money, you see. Yeah, it is a bit edgy. It's a bit difficult to get all documents, paperwork um, to the high court enforcement officers. But if they are giving more time, perhaps they can take a more balanced approach. Uh, so I think my client has taken a the right step to make some payments on account uh, and thereafter uh, just send all the private the paperwork and documents to the uh, enforcement officers uh, and they will obviously take it from there. The owner's relative who tried to prevent the sheriffs doing their job is taken away by police. Meanwhile, Craig is beginning to believe the case will soon be over. Bring me a trusty friend with me, so hopefully the payment will be made. The shop owner is waiting for someone to pay money into her account. She signs an official agreement which leaves the stock in the shop, but hands ownership to the court on paper until she either proves it belongs to her or agrees to pay the remainder of the debt. Right, just wait for this payment. Once the payment's received, I'll give you copies of all your paperwork. Finally, the money arrives and the shop owner pays. Enter your pin and press the green button, please. Approved. Boom. The money will be held by the sheriffs, giving her a chance to prove she owns the stock. The sheriffs have secured part of the payment and expect the rest to follow. It was quite a good result, apart from one gentleman had to be removed by the police, actually arrested, which uh, we never want to see happen, but he was stopping me doing my job, physically stopping me. So the officer intervened uh, and had to arrest him in the end. Since we filmed, the Crown Prosecution Service decided not to bring a prosecution against the man arrested by the police. The Earlston convenience store told us the recent invoice found in the previous store owner's name was a mistake caused by a wholesaler issuing it in the wrong account name. They stressed that the current business owner's reticence to pay the debt was not due to financial difficulties, but because she disputed that it was she that owed it. To date, however, the convenience store has not been able to prove who owned the stock in the store. The money collected on the day has therefore been paid to the sheriff's client. The sheriffs are enforcement agents of the High Court. I've got an High Court writ, I'm executing here today. We're here to collect seats £1,930, 20 pence. We do at this stage have Paul Locksmith if needs be. If you don't pay us, then we've got an awful lot of stuff to take out of here to clear the debt. A High Court writ costs £60. If the sheriffs are successful, there's nothing more to pay. Please for this fan now, so we'll keep them. If they're unsuccessful, the only cost is a compliance fee of £75 plus VAT for each enforcement. 
With dawn just around the corner, Sheriffs Lawrence Gricks and Kev McNally are in West London. But this morning, they're not looking for a debtor. Instead, they've got a writ of possession to evict a group of squatters. Just after five o'clock at the moment, and we're on our way to a repossession in London. It's a pub we'd, we've done before, the Cross Keys. We took possession of it for the client about a year ago. There's now squatters in there again. We've been sold this between five and 10 people. A year ago, Lawrence and Kev visited the same pub after it was occupied by squatters, having become vacant while the owner sought to develop it. The sheriff's forced entry and were lucky enough to avoid a booby trap left for them at the door. They managed to evict the squatters and return the pub to its rightful owner. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. You know where we are if you need us again? Sure. Come on in, chaps. We're done. Let's go and find a calf. <laughs> But the development process has again become drawn out, leaving the building empty. And now a new bunch of squatters has moved in. So it's Lawrence and Kev's job, along with some colleagues and a team supplied by the owner, to get the new squatters out. The sheriffs are keen to make entry before the sleeping squatters realise what's happening. There's no sign of any movement in there at the moment. There's a dim light on, on the first floor. Doesn't appear to be anything on the ground floor, but it's boarded up, so you can't really see anyway. They've gained entry through the rear, we believe. We'll be going in through the front. If they want to run out the rear as we go in the front, you know, that's entirely up to them and, uh, and suits us. It's time to go in. Normally, the sheriffs bring in their own experts to do this. The men supplied by the client are making a lot of noise. They're awake, uh, it's hard not to be on it, really. The doors open, but they can't get in. The entrance is barricaded. Until the gear's out, the sheriffs won't be going in. Guys, take it easy. That stuff's got to come out. Come on, you lot, start moving some of this stuff. We're doing your job for you. You're supposed to be getting us in. Bring everything out. The sheriffs have a dilemma. They need to get in quickly to stop the squatters barricading any more doors. But having experienced the booby trap last time, Lawrence doesn't want his men taking unnecessary risks. James, careful. The booby trap's back in place. With the barricade cleared, there's a second door. Right, we need a crowbar again. Right, that's the ground floor. You don't want to go that way. Up the stairs. We've got a writ of possession. You don't need to leave. We'll give you a bit of time to get your stuff together, OK? How many of you in here? About 20, OK? It's a lot of bodies to shift along with all their stuff. Some things haven't changed since the last raid. I'm surprised the TV's still in here. They were watching that last time we were in. And a year later, I'm very surprised to see a big TV still in here. Quite a bit grubbier. At least some of the squatters realise the game is up, take advantage of the newly opened door and leave. The door says open? Yeah. Thanks, Got an easy way out. You don't have to risk life and limb on the roof this morning. The squatter's normal route in and out is perilous, but has to be checked and shut off. This is the door they were using, and there's a ladder down there I believe they were using to, to drop down to the ground floor and then climb up the ladder and come in this, uh, this window. It was open when I came up here. He's just been checking all around the roof just to make sure there's nobody out here so then we can secure it. And we're safe to say to the client that there's nobody on the roof, so we just have to check everywhere. Although some of the squatters are now out, many of those remaining have been here a while and have a lot of stuff. Get the f come round my face, man. Yeah, it was hard as the SCU. Blame something, man. You've said you've got too much stuff to carry, which is fair to comment, so take it out and come back in for the rest, yeah? We'll leave you a bit longer on this floor to get what you've got here. The procedure now is to empty and check off each area of the pub and make sure no one gets back in. All out now, Lord. Yeah, everybody's out of there. Roof's clear. 
Did you know that Bob Marley used to drink here? Yeah, yeah he did. Wow. One of the squatters has a go at disrupting filming. Does that look cool? Did you want your step machine or whatever it was? Yeah. Just found it in the bar. It looks like the squatters are all out, but the sheriffs know only too well that just one person left behind can let the rest back in. So every nook and cranny is checked, though Lawrence leaves the attic to the younger members of the team. Make sure you walk on the rafters. The ones that are here today, there are about 20 of them. They weren't too bad. You've got the old one being a bit gobby and trying to provoke a reaction. But generally speaking, they're outside whinging about that, but they've not been so bad at all. No, they're all sort of done here. They're all, all the squatters are out. About 20 of them in total. They've loitered around, around here for a little bit, so let them carry on with it. It's been a fairly smooth operation for the sheriffs. For the second time in just over a year, the Cross Keys pub has been cleared of squatters. It's a mess, but not that badly damaged. Thank you, Richard. See you later. It's been handed back to the rightful owner who can finally develop the building. Having building work done can be stressful at the best of times. When it goes wrong, it can also be expensive. Enforcement agents Lawrence and Kev are heading into the aftermath of a building job that went very wrong indeed. Uh, the amount we're looking for is £11,649. He's aware of it because he put in an appeal that's been refused. So there's nowhere to go on this one for him, really. In 2009, a home county's builder built an extension for a local couple. When the main build was done, the couple still had a number of problems, including a leaking roof, leaking bathroom and a badly done terrace. The builder didn't put them right. The couple say it was very stressful and they spent £10,000 with other builders to correct the faults. Now they've been to court to get the money from the builder. So far, he hasn't paid, so Lawrence and Kev are going to his house to get the unhappy householders their money. The builder is not at home, and neither is his wife, though she is soon on the phone. Hello there. Um, I, I can't actually tell you what it's about. All I can do is identify myself. The wife says she's coming back to the house and will then call her husband. All right, no problem. I'll hand the phone back to your friend. Cheers. Bye-bye. The wife arrives home and is joined by a relative, but they do not want to be on camera. Lawrence can't give out details because they're not named on the writ, but the builder is soon on the phone. You've got a high court writ to execute against you. They've chosen to transfer it up to the High Court for enforcement purposes. We're ordered here to remove goods today to the value of £11,649.11. £11. Once you've got a county court judgment against you, you were obliged to pay it. End of story. The builder thought the story had a way to go. He says he's made an appeal. You've made various appeals which have all been thrown out. I've, I've, got, I've got copies of all the, all the court orders with me. So, so there's... So there's, there's, there's nowhere to go with it. He then reveals that he had been planning to settle the debt. He's been saving up and has more than half the money. You'd say you've got, was it six or seven thousand? Um, that, that would probably do for today, to be fair. And what I would suggest you do is put in a payment proposal to pay the balance off. Yeah, okay, no worries. See you shortly. The builder is on his way with the money. While they wait, the wife explains to Lawrence and Kev that originally they took the couple who they did the work for to court for not paying in full. But their case failed and the couple mounted a counterclaim for the faults, which is the debt the builder has been saving to pay off. <laughs> the builder has slipped into the house through the back door. Before he talks to the sheriffs, he wants a family conference. Can you just go and see if you can find the reg of his van, mate? 
It's a red van, isn't it? So it'll be around that way somewhere. Kev takes advantage of the wait to discharge one of the sheriff's formal duties. They're going to list the builder's van for potential removal. Rough. Well, yeah. But it's not very new and not worth very much. The family want to check where they stand. We're going to leave today, yeah. Satisfied their plan will rid them of the sheriffs today, they invite Lawrence and Kev in. As promised, he's come with cash. But with the end in sight, there's a problem. The builder hands over a bundle of notes, but it's £100 less than the £7,000 he offered. Nevertheless, Lawrence sticks to his end of the deal. It's well over half of the £11,000 debt and good enough for today. The builder now has to submit a plan for the rest of the debt. And because of his actions so far, Lawrence trusts he'll do so and stick to it. The builder says he will pursue his appeal, but so far the courts have found in favor of the couple he did the work for. The builder and the sheriffs part on good terms. So 6,900 there, which we got here. Their side of the story was fair enough. You know, they had intention from the start to, to settle the debt, um, and they were in the process of, of saving the money and paying it off. The gentleman's going to write in a proposal to the office, and really we've got no option other than to recommend that the client accept it because there's just no goods worth removing. Whatever happens in the next stage of the legal process, a large cash payment has been made, and now there's every chance the couple who had the work done will be paid in full. It's been a good, if tiring, day for the sheriffs. <laughs> the builder told us, in his opinion, he had done good quality work for the couple. He said through every step of the build, from footings to finish, there was no problem with any of the work he had done. And if there was something that the homeowner hadn't liked, he'd changed it there and then. He said the homeowners themselves had said to him the work was good. The issue of who owns what is one that sheriffs have to deal with all the time. Well, the cows aren't mine. Doesn't matter who they're registered to, it's who they're owned by. So why are they on your forecourt then? They can only remove what belongs to whoever's named on the writ. And unsurprisingly, debtors aren't the most cooperative people when it comes to helping establish ownership. There's still assets belonging to the company. No, there isn't any assets. With that in mind, Sheriffs Daryl Orriton and Mark Povey are in the Midlands, on the way to their latest enforcement. Uh, yeah, this is um, an employment tribunal. Uh, gentleman's been um, unfairly dismissed and he's taken the company to court. Daryl's going in with a positive approach, but this is a far from straightforward case with no guarantee of success. The company in question, Level One Lincoln Limited, is a security company, providing doorman and security staff to venues and events. Given the world they operate in, Daryl doesn't know what to expect when he gets there. They just be minimal, minimal assets of no value. Until we get there, we're not gonna we're not gonna realise that. Keen to find out exactly what is there, they park up and head in. Hello there. The High Court writ to execute against Level One. Is it you I need to speak to? What's it about? On behalf of Mr A. Cubison. Mr who, sorry? It's an employment tribunal case. All right, OK. Um, we've got a High Court writ, as I just said. Um, we're here to collect £8,900. At this point, we're asked to stop filming. The office staff, in the meantime, get in touch with their boss, who agrees to come down. Fifteen minutes later, the boss arrives in his BMW, ready for a one-on-one -on -one face off with Daryl. Right, sir. 
the clash of the titans continues behind closed doors. The boss says that the office came furnished and everything inside belongs not to the company but to the landlord, which happens to be him. Moments later, Daryl comes outside to fill us in. He's refusing to pay, saying everything is owned by himself, nothing to do with the company. So I'm just going to ring the office now and find out what they want to do. He's saying, you know, if you want to get your, your vans down here and do removal, then go for it. So I just want to know how far I can really push this. Daryl and the office agree they must follow procedure and issue official court paperwork as the first step in this enforcement. What assets are in the office will be the courts on paper, but they'll stay on the premises for now. Daryl suspects what assets there are might not be worth the value of the debt anyway. Daryl informs the boss that for today at least, he's off the hook. It's a disappointing end for Daryl, but there's still a chance they can get a result down the line. The office are prepared to give him a chance to provide proof of ownership to all the goods in there. Well, I believe clearly they are owned by the company. Um, he's got five days, he's not going to pay it. I'm sure we'll be back. So, as Daryl predicted, despite leaving their paperwork, no money was paid. 13 weeks later, it was time for round two as he and Mark went back to Level 1 Lincoln Limited to remove the goods they'd listed. Right, sir. It's a case of deja vu for both the sheriffs and our camera. No, that's right, I need to speak to someone who is there, really. Watch out, well, please. Right. Watch out, well. The boss isn't there, and we're asked to leave. Then Daryl's given the news that all sheriffs dread. An invoice document proves all the goods do indeed belong to the boss personally. Even worse, he's told the company thereafter has stopped trading and a new one set up with the same man as its director and it's based in the office. They were looking for Level 1 Lincoln Limited. They found Level 1 Group Lincoln Limited, a different company. Unfortunately, this enforcement is now dead in the water because as Level 1 Group Lincoln is a different company, it has no connection to Level 1 Lincoln's debts. It's exactly the outcome Daryl didn't want. All the documentation there is Level 1 Group, which no one bothered to tell us till like, we've been in there 45 minutes. Um, we're after Level 1 Lincoln Limited. So this ain't going nowhere ever. Companies being wound up while new companies are set up in the same premises with almost identical names is something the sheriffs encounter all too frequently. Millions of pounds of debt every year are written off as companies cease trading, go into liquidation or are dissolved, with Level 1 Lincoln being another such case. For the sheriffs, it's frustrating, but however much they want to get their clients' money, they must always obey the law.